low. Obviously, this is not your mother's through hiking YouTube channel. And obviously, we're all different. Obviously, don't take my advice. I'm just some person talking to a camera who got a free YouTube channel. Okay? We're all different. You need to do you. I am going to do me. That said, I prepared myself for this point. I have in fact quit before an Andover, Maine with just a little over 200 miles to go to finish the trail. I knew what it felt like. I knew how hard it was. Yet here I am. Not even to Andover before the Whites and I am wanting to quit. It is so hard. It's not just me, people. It's everyone. It's hard. We've been on the trail a long time. We've been eating crappy food for a very long time. We're tired. Our bodies are overextended. We've been abusing them for months. We are pushing our bodies harder than we will ever push them. And with that much abuse, it can't help but affect us mentally and emotionally. Okay, you're just sitting on a chair at home and you don't have a clue what it's like out here at this point. I'm doing my best to share it with you, not sugarcoating anything. I'm letting it all hang out. So, I guess I am, what do I want to say? I guess I am not monitoring what I say. And granted, I haven't really monitored what I want to say. I would say I am not comfortable. I'm very uncomfortable. I got bug bites. I've lost who knows how much weight. I'm pushing myself to the brink every day. My feet and legs hurt. I'm so tired of going to the bathroom and digging a hole first thing in the morning. I'm tired of the rain. I'm tired of the heat. So I'm not in that great of a mood right now. I know most of you are well-meaning. You followed my journey. You want to see me succeed. You're just trying to help me. And I appreciate it. But I'm the one out here doing it, okay? I'm the one out here making the decisions, dealing with the repercussions of the decisions. So I got to do it. But I'm just sharing all of the things that are going on in my mind. Maybe I shouldn't do that. What? There's some movie, and they used to show the clip in the commercials as a promo for the movie. The maniacal ravings of a lunatic mind was something with Gene Wilder in it. Sometimes that's the way I feel, but I don't usually hold back if I talk. And truth be told, I don't like to talk. I really don't. When I'm talking to this camera, I'm just spilling what's in my mind for anyone that wants to listen and maybe to relieve the pressure because I'm hiking alone out here and sometimes you gotta just let it out. So, we had gentle rains last night, and I got up 
first thing in the morning to go dig a hole. It was not raining. And to my surprise, my tent was dry. Apparently it rained so gently that the canopy above protected my tent or it was just so light that it dried. However, the minute I got back into the tent, and I am grateful that it held off, the heavens opened and my tent got saturated. But at least I didn't have to poop in the rain, you know? Count your blessings, man. So, getting off a little bit later. I think it was 6.30. Boy, I really had to stuff down the breakfast this morning. I thought it was a great idea to send myself granola once in a while. And it seems like I'm getting quite a bit of granola. And I'm not enjoying it at all. Lately I've been having it with hot water in it and eating it like oatmeal, but it's so much sweeter than oatmeal, especially when it's hot, it tastes sweeter, but at least that way I can put the ghee in there and the protein powder, and the honey bun, which I just, the Intamin's honey buns are not as good as the Little Debbie's, the Intamin's I don't think have any cinnamon in it, at least the iced ones, and I don't like the iced honey buns as much as the uniced but they have more calories, and sometimes that's all you can find. So I choked those down this morning. I did get to talk to Bud last night. This T-Mobile is so crazy. I can turn it on, and it says either no service or emergency calls only. There are no bars. And I was sending them an in-reach message, and I looked down there, and it says, boom, 5G, five bars. Okay. So I was able to call him, but I got the machine. But then he texted me back, but by that time, I only had one bar LTE, so I couldn't call him. So I guess I didn't get to talk to him, but at least I had some contact at least in texts, I can say everything I want to, and he can reply back. We're limited with the inrage on how many characters we have, and we got to keep those messages within a certain number, or we get charged extra, and the extra is extra expensive. So we try to stay within that. And it's not raining right now, for which I am very grateful. I am far out, says the barn door hostel has bunks for 90 bucks. In AWOL, it says 40 bucks. So I have asked him to contact them. They are climate controlled. And... My recollection from Hiker's Welcome Hostel was that I first was going to get a bunk and went up there and then I said, I'll just set up my tent. And then I set up my tent and they had a campfire out there and everybody was smoking weed. I just don't want to smell it, people. I'm not judging you for doing it. I don't want to smell it. This stuff smells terrible. And then you smell like it when you come back inside and it stinks up the room okay I've had my own addictions I know what it's like you just gotta have the weed okay you just gotta numb out you gotta cover the emotions you gotta cover all of the hurt and the pain and whatever you need to do to just zone out you need to do I get it but sometimes those things affect other people. But people with addictions just don't care if it is an addiction. 
They got to have their fix at all costs. No matter how much they're hurting those they love. And I'm speaking from personal experience. I don't want to go into detail. But thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus that he can completely turn a person's life around. I'm so grateful. I didn't do it. It was not one day at a time. When he took it away, it was gone. Was I ever tempted again? The minute that thought popped back into my head, I said, no, in Jesus' name. No, I do not want you. There were times when I had a bad day and I just had this inkling. Wow, I sure would like to do that. And I said, no. I do not want to be entrapped by that again. I was so grateful to be free that I never wanted to go back to that place again, ever. And there was one time where I just barely did anything. I just dipped my toes in. And I felt like I had slapped Jesus in the face. And I vowed never to do that. It was sort of a pressure situation where I felt like I needed to not offend someone. I know it's stupid, but I just uh, did a little and felt like I was slapping Jesus in the face because I was so grateful to be rid of of that prison and so I'm not judging you if you have an addiction I'm not judging you if you do weed I do in fact feel sorry for you because you can't have a good time without smoking your weed and I do realize that there are some people who are using it for pain management you know and I get that too, but there are always payoffs for everything. For example, I was in a car wreck and I fractured my pelvis in three places and cracked a couple of ribs. And they gave me Vicodin. Ooh, I hated the way that made my head feel. But I had the worst constipation that I have ever had in my life. It was scary constipation. Try having constipation when you have a broken rib or fractured pelvis. So, last time, somebody said, when I talked about weed and how it was rude to smoke weed in the shelter or smoke it around other people. There are children out here hiking. Anyway, somebody said, Mind your own business. Well, uh, no, it's impossible to mind your own business. Most of the time, I'm huddled up in a corner in a shelter trying to go to sleep or reading or editing videos. <laughs> it is difficult. To mind my own business when I can't read, when I can't breathe because of the skunk weed. Because the whole shelter smells like skunk. Has your dog ever gotten into a skunk? Mine has, multiple times. And boy, is it terrible. Nobody puts up with that. Why do they put up with that weed stink? So that's my rant for today. Who knows how many you're going to get before I either finish the trail or quit. I'm not in a good mood. I don't see how this is all going to work out. We're supposed to have rain for the next several days. Who wants to go over Mount Musilock in the rain? Uh, not only because it's dangerous, but because you're not going to see a thing. So, I'll do what I have to do, except go over the mountain in the rain. 
except go over that mountain in the rain. I am just beside myself worrying about all of this and how it's going to play out. And i got to tell you that I am more than a little worried and maybe even a little afraid knowing how I feel. I don't remember a whole lot about it. I remember it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be once I got through it. But it is, even though I've been through it, fear of the unknown that's getting me. And that's always been the worst fear. Still going through mud, people. Trying to go on the edges. And it is a mess. It is an absolute mess. And then my muddy shoe just kicked up against my leg, so i got muddy leg now. So, I appreciate those of you who are still here. I don't even know why you're still watching, because this is not your mother's YouTube channel. And... I know I'm not like everyone else. So, uh, I guess that's all I have to say, believe it or not. Believe it or not. Spider webs. Ooh, they tickle. One more thing to those of you who think... I should mind my own business about the weed. My business is like this. Your business is like this. And your business is encroaching upon my business. So it's impossible for me to mind my business when your business is in my business. Welcome Hostel does not take reservations, and when the bunkhouse is full, they have overflow tenting, and I knew that there were quite a few people who had gone before me. I knew it was supposed to rain today, I knew it was supposed to rain tomorrow, it rained last night, and that usually packs the hostels. So I decided to come to the Barn Door Hostel. It's 30 minute drive away from the trail and so it's more expensive it caters to rock climbers uh, but it seems to be nice I had a meltdown after I got here it's a little bit different than other hostels and they want you to leave your pack in a shed I get it, our packs smell terrible hikers Packs at this point smell terrible, really terrible. And I'm the only one here at this point. And so they didn't even want to show me the bunkhouse before I had a shower. Laundry is done at 8 o'clock at night, so I won't get my clothes back until tomorrow. And after I got my shower, I came into the bunk room and there is no AC. Granted, we're in New Hampshire. How often do they need AC here? But it has been so humid and hot on the trail. I was just so disappointed that there wasn't air conditioning because I just wanted to be cool. I wanted to be out of the humidity. And 
there is a little unit here. I thought it was an AC unit, so I went out and asked them if I could turn on the AC. They said, oh, that's a heater. I said, I thought this was supposed to be climate controlled. And anyway, I proceeded to have a meltdown, and I started ugly crying. And I just apologized and said, told them I was at a breaking point. I was sorry for being rude, uh, but that I was hungry. And they had told me that we wouldn't be going to resupply until 2.30, after 2.30, when other hikers got here. So that was the straw that broke the camel's back that led to the meltdown because I was hungry and I needed something to eat. And as far as I knew, there was nothing close. It seems like it's all kind of country residential. And so anyway, after I apologized, I went to the hiker room and uh, a girl who works here offered to take me to Walmart which I thought was very kind. She and her boyfriend work here. And so she took me to Walmart and I was able to get some coke and stuff to eat and a few resupply things. I got some bug wipes, but the only wipes I could find rather than a big bottle or can, I wanted wipes, they're natural wipes. So I don't know how well they're gonna work, but if it helps only a little, it'll be worth it. So, my plan is to have them drive me back to the trailhead, then I'll walk to Piker Welcome Hostel, I'll have tomorrow to rest, and hopefully they will be able to slack pack me day after tomorrow over Moose because I don't want to go northbound. Been there, done that, and as far as I'm concerned, it was the scariest part of the trail that I did up to that point. So, um, I guess that is about it for now. I am just resting and relaxing and I am editing videos, recharging my devices. The beds seem to be very comfortable. The humidity has gone down quite a bit since I've gotten here. And it looks like the sun's coming out, so maybe I can dry out my tent. So, for now, this is Rebound, signing out.